Hello and welcome to Valheim by the Numbers. This is the beginning of a new series where we will discuss the optimal loadout for each boss and biome in the game. Today we'll be covering the meadows, so let's go ahead and get started with the armor. When your playthrough is at the meadows stage, you really only have two options in armor. You have the rag armor and the leather armor. The leather armor has a higher armor value and doesn't have any additional movement debuffs over the rag armor, so it's just objectively better, and thus it is the best armor at this progression in the game. When you're at the meadows level of progression, you'll be spending most of your time in the meadows, the black forest, and the burial chambers until you're able to get black forest level gear. As such, these three biomes will be the ones we'll consider at this stage of progression. Unfortunately, since there's only one armor to really consider at this point in your game progression, uh, it is by default the best in this in all three circumstances. Where this gets more interesting is when we look at the best armor overall for these circumstances. However, before we get into it, let me explain what these numbers are. So I created a program which calculates the average damage per hit from each type of creature in each biome and circumstance. The program then takes a weighted average of these damages with an emphasis on the creatures which hit the hardest or attack in packs. The idea is that if your armor does well against trolls, then you wouldn't be concerned about a Grey Dwarf Brute. Uh, however, a pack of Grey Dwarves may be more dangerous than a single Shaman. As you can see, when it comes to the meadows and the Black Forest, the highest protection set that you can have is just straight Carapace with a level 4 cape. However, I find that the Fenris set provides more than enough protection in these two biomes, and so I just end up wearing that because it gives you the extra speed. Uh, when it comes to the burial chambers, however, the highest protection that you can have is the carapace set with a root mask. Uh, this is because the root mask mitigates poison damage and rancid remains do reside in the burial chambers. However, at this point, when you, if you're running the burial chambers with end level gear, you can probably still run it with whatever you want and I will be running it with Fenris. Alright, so let's go ahead and start talking about the weapons. In a similar manner to the armor calculations, I created a program which calculates the damage potential of each melee weapon in every biome. More specifically, the program finds the optimal attack pattern for each weapon against every creature, and then takes a weighted average of these numbers. The program accounts for everything except attacking multiple enemies at once, and it assumes that you're landing a sneak attack about 5% of the time on solo creatures like trolls, and 2.5% of the time on pack creatures like grey dwarves. The weight places an emphasis on mobs which deal the most damage or attack in packs, because really who cares how long it takes to kill something if it's not doing any damage. Uh, with that said, by far the best weapon when you're at the meadows level for both the black forest and the meadows is going to be the flint spear. However, when you first venture into the burial chambers, you're probably going to want to have a club with you as it'll do significantly more damage than any of the other weapons. When we get down to the best possible weapons for these three circumstances, you can see that the AI favors knives and spears heavily because they're able to dispatch individual creatures the fastest due to their high attack speed. But the AI doesn't account for the ability to hit multiple enemies at once, since it's very circumstantial. With this in mind, endgame knives are still probably your best choice for the meadows, since they don't give you a movement debuff and you can run around and quickly one-shot anything in the meadows. However, once we look at the Black Forest, I'd probably want to go with something more like the Black Metal Sword or the Porcupine, because those can hit a wider area of enemies, and enemies in the Black Forest tend to come in large groups. And so to take care of them, I would go with one of those previous two weapons. Once we get down into the Burial Chambers, however, uh, the highest rated weapon is the Krom, and it's always hard to go wrong with the Krom. So, it's a great weapon down there. However, one thing to note is that the Demolisher can be useful since it can hit things behind doors and also from behind cover in the limited space. And now that we've got the melee weapons out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the ranged weapons. At this point in the game, the only bow that you have access to is the Crude Bow. And frankly, I just skip this. 
uh, on most of my playthroughs, since you can throw a spear, a deer, and everything else will run towards you. However, if you're struggling with just starting off in the Black Forest or in the Burial Chambers, it can sometimes be useful to have another ranged option besides your spear. Uh, that way you're not putting yourself in as much risk and you can hit things from a range. And with that, I think we've covered the best loadout for your playthrough in the Meadows. In our next guide, we'll be talking about the best possible loadout to fight the first boss, Ikthir. If you found this guide helpful and would like to see this series continued, please leave a comment and be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if we reach a thousand subscribers by the time I release the video for the Queen, I'll attach a link to the analysis AI and all the spreadsheets used in and for these videos. With that said, have a good one and happy gaming.